Well, it's the 4th of July, so uh, happy Independence Day, all my uh, stateside friends here. So uh, it's, it's kind of a kind of a relaxing day for me. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, I got invited to uh, go boating. I uh, just really didn't feel like it this weekend. I wanted to stay home, and I actually wanted to do some barbecue. And uh, I got my brother and my sister going to come over later, and we're going to have dinner. So thought I would show you what I'm cooking. I'm doing another pork roast on the grill. Uh, it's a recipe that I found from the uh, Barbecue Pit Boys uh, YouTube channel. And then I'm also uh, smoking a chicken over there. So thought I'd give you a peek. I still have a lot of guys that, that really like seeing my little barbecue shots. Uh, had plenty of people say that I should do it more. So it's just something that I like to throw in SNS. So here's a little barbecue shot. Uh, also, I was talking to James Green earlier about uh, different marinades and bastings and things like that. So I thought I would throw this in there for you too. All right. Okay, so there is the, uh, the pork roast, uh, also known as a uh, Boston butt. And it's, uh, it's basically marinated with uh, brown sugar and salt and some pepper. And then I uh, got a little bit of onion down in the pan. And after it cooks down a little while, you take a baster, like this, and you just keep basting it. I'll probably do that about at least once an hour. I'll come out here and baste it really good. And man, is it good. So that's the, uh, that's the roast. A uh, little bit of indirect cooking. You see I have coals on each side and I just have my pan right there in the middle I've got it on a rack with some uh, stainless flat bar underneath it to try to keep it up off the liquid and uh, there's my temp in there I try to keep it around 250 but uh, that's something that I'm still playing with and trying to figure out is uh, the best way to maintain uh, the proper temperature it seems like it's usually a little, it's either a little too hot or a little too cool. So I just let it go. And, and as long as I'm not, as long as I'm not running over 300 right there, I'm usually pretty happy with it. So we're trying to bring this to an internal temp of 190 degrees. And at that point, it'll just fall apart on you. So we'll go ahead and give it one more quick little baste while we're right here. Okay. All right, then we come down here to the, uh, the smoker. And there's my beer can chicken that, uh, that we've been smoking all day also. Low and slow. I've got it all the way down on low. Uh, so I've got a little box there with some pecan chips in it. And I just about need to put a little more water in there. But that's it right there. I use uh, beer can chicken seasoning uh, made by Weber. And it turns out real good. I got it on a beer can chicken rack with the can of Miller Lite underneath it. And I just have it sitting in a cast iron pan. A little easier to handle for me. All right. So that's my 4th of July cooking that's going on. And I uh, hope you had fun. And I hope that all you guys are enjoying your 4th and getting to do the same thing. Getting out doing your grill and uh, doing some barbecue, doing some grilling, some smoking. It's fun. It's what, that's what I like to do on the weekends when I can. So, also wanted to point out too, uh, I got my American flag out there. <laughs> now there's my chimney where I start my coals. And also got my little American flag here on a, uh, <laughs> a little surface gauge. So, all right, we'll check you later, okay? Well, we're uh, finally working on the Kearney and Trucker milling machine. And I know so many of you guys are impatiently waiting to see a little bit of progress on this. So I actually started working on this uh, last week. I had taken a couple days off and I started the uh, oil draining process and then I removed a couple things from the side, uh, get them out of the way. I did some reading up on the proper way to remove this uh, this is actually called the distribution box. 
and I thought it was going to be a very, very complicated deal, and it probably still will be a complicated situation. Uh, but so far, <laughs> everything's going pretty good. And I followed the instructions uh, based off the uh, manual that was on, a, well, it actually came from James Kilroy, but it was on the uh, vintagemachinery.org website for this model mill. So it said to drain the oil. Uh, I got to disconnect the wires here, which I've already done for the motor, for the pump, which is behind this. And then remove all the bolts, which is around that perimeter there. They're all cap head bolts. Only got two left in there at the top here. <clears throat> Lock the knee or the saddle. I mean, the saddle. And then uh, turn the hand wheel and push the distribution box off away from the knee. So that's what I did. And I couldn't get it to move. The table kept moving. The saddle did. So I took my lead and I started gently just tapping it all the way around that case. Just I just kept tapping it, tapping it, and it finally went, just cracked loose, came, came off there. So I've only moved it maybe an eighth of an inch, had a little bit of more oil coming out, so I just put letting that drain. And I wanted to get a, a couple minutes charge on my camera here because I left it on over the weekend and, and so it's dead. So. We're gonna we're gonna attempt to slide this out. Now what I've done is uh, I bought these bolts last year, and these were kind of a recommendation from somebody from Kearney and Trekker that told James about this. Was to put some long bolts in some holes. That way you can slide that sucker out. Uh, now how this is gonna come out, I'm not really sure yet. So it's gonna be a in process learning situation here. And uh, I mainly just need to get it out so that I can check the hydraulic system on it and see if I can find out what's wrong. So that's what we're doing. But we got to get it apart. So uh, I I'm going to bring the camera over there and show you a little closer of how, how this thing is sliding out, all right? All right, I don't have a lot of time here on the battery, but I'm going to show you what we're working on. I don't know if I'm going to take it completely off, but we'll show you what's happening here. I've still got two of the regular bolts in here. All right. All right, it just pulled up on these, so I'm going to go ahead and take those two out and Pretty neat system the way they've got this thing designed, um, but all the shafts are still up inside there to drive everything. And um, it's the manual said to keep doing this until the uh, the feed screw rod here itself disengages from the nut, and then you take it and you slide it back yourself. That's another reason for these bolts here. But it said once you get it out far enough, then you put a sling around it and uh, and grab it with that. Wrong way. All right, so you get the idea there. I got to feed the wires up into this little tunnel here. All right, and uh, I'm getting a little bit of binding now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. I'm, I'm trying to check in there to make sure there's no oil lines that need disconnected. It doesn't say anything about any of the oil lines, but it doesn't make any sense. It seemed like one of those oil lines comes up to the bottom here that indicates oil pressure for your um, knee lubricant. Okay, so I'll bring you back whenever I get a little more in depth there, but this is a start right here. Thought you guys would like to see that. All right, so we'll show you some more progress later. Okay, not really 100% uh, sure what to expect here, but this thing is just about loose. The, uh, the cross feed screw is just about out of the nut, and I'm trying to get it prepared for the sling and the uh, 
the A-frame here to uh, take the full weight of it once it comes loose. <clears throat> uh, I think it's hanging down the bolts just a little bit. But anyway, I've got some blocks in here. This is one of the dial pins that uh, lines it up into the knee. And they've got one here and you got one up here also. This one's, this one's still in the machine right there, see? But i got a block here on this side is keeping the strap off the oil lines on this side, okay? And then the same thing, there was some mechanisms right here that I didn't want the strap to be pushing against. So I've got a block here and I'm using the dowel pin down here to keep it off of these oil lines. So I don't know what to expect, but here we go. travel on my uh, my gantry my plan was to pull it out and actually take it down here to the uh, take it down here to the welding table and set it down but I'm kind of going to be trapping myself in my own little situation right here I might have to just bring it up on here on the knee itself but I think we're just about out of there Everything just slides right on out. You got some different shafts in here. Everything just slides out of the knee. Wow, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remove the bolt here. All right, I got the bolt out of the way. wires for the pump motor. Just give them everything a look. Make sure we're not catching. Man. I never would have thought all that just came straight on out. Alright. I hope this thing I kind of got it in the middle of all the mass, you know, hoping that the little more weight is that way, but it could be full of me here. Oh man, I'm just, I'm out of travel. We gotta get that spline shaft out. It's the last one. Those overarm supports with that vertical head on there, them overarm supports are so far back there that my pipes are gonna run into them. goes way up in there okay I made some tweaks here and I just got her I just slid it all the way out okay and it feels like we're actually pretty well balanced Man, 
one shaft. That's for the. Uh, let me see if I can go this way a little. Okay, there we go. All right, look at that, man. What was I nervous about? Pretty wild. All right, and the this this right here, this block, that's what we've been trying to get to right there. So. My goal was to get it, try to get it out, you know, do the wrenching, get it done. And I'm gonna have Paul come in here and look at it with me and see if he can visually find something that's actually messed up what's wrong. Um, but this is where you adjust your uh, pressure. This should be your, uh, I believe this is your relief valve here. So we gotta get in here and, and check that out, all right? And there may be something else, so. Uh, got the hard part done. So I gotta get it on the table. Okay, so next update is uh, what I had to do is take the uh, vertical head back off the machine so that I can bring the overarms forward enough and get them out of the way so that I can actually roll the, the gantry. That's one of the things that I had uh, failed to uh, consider and measure was the width of this after the overarms are all the way back so that a, the vertical head could go on there. It's just something that I overlooked and think about. So I'm still able to use everything. It's just, it's, it's a little more of a pinch, but <clears throat> anyway, we're, we're getting it. I've got the uh, distribution box down here on the floor uh, resting so that when I get through moving this, I can pick it up and hopefully maybe take it down here to the welding table. I'm going to check the crane and see where it'll go down here to and, and see where I can set it. I might have to move these toolboxes and set it on the end of the table here. I don't know yet. So I'm just getting this off. I just thought I'd show you. The, uh, the height of the crane has worked out perfect for getting that on and off. And just taking this on and off is a little bit of a challenge right there. It's a very close fit on these boards here for the overarms. But we get it. So. I'm going to go ahead and, and take this. I got to uh, move the uh, overarms. Here, I'll give you a shot of it. I just loosen the, uh, the two top clamps here. And then there's your crank handle. So you can see what I'm talking about here. Whatever it is, it goes about to right there. That's the issue. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and crank these suckers out like that. Now I should have room. I have to scoot it over just a little bit, and uh, we'll set the vertical head right down here. Trying to get it up against the machine here. Put a two by underneath the spindle. And I'm going to take it to the welding table. Uh, the, uh, the jib crane works out perfect. I can actually set something down like right on the middle of the table. I can't go any further than that because the uh, the frame for the uh, garage door is in the way for it to roll any further. But I'm going to keep it low. Alright, we'll take you that way. Maybe I'll give you a ride down on, on the frame here.
your pickup right there. So, let's see. taking that off and cleaning it but we want to mess with this here so yeah I think I better turn it that way Part of the casting is on the very bottom right here, so I'm going to set it just like this, be on this uh, housing here, the frame part of it, and it's also down here, so I'm going to lay it down right there. And there she is. Okay. And that's, that's quite a mechanism right there. my block falling over here. Alright, <clears throat> get, get this unhooked. So there's you a little better look at the uh, the whole distribution box now this is your wiring for the uh, for the motor here you got a you got a motor up front which uh, drives the pump back here and honestly I'm not sure where exactly the pump is at just at this point this this is actually part of the case here this is part of a housing cast iron housing okay and you've got inside there is the uh, basically the gearbox it's full of gears up inside here now I do see a shaft coming all the way through this shaft right here is going all the way through to that motor okay and all this stuff will spin so it's looking like the pump it may be this right here this may be the pump Just don't know yet. But what we're wanting to look at is uh, this box right down here on the bottom. We're going to start there. We're going to start with these. This is where you adjust your pressure right here, okay? Like a uh, like a relief valve. So we're going to start here, check it, and see if we can find anything wrong with that. And if not, we'll continue to move through there. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna tinker with it just a second. I'm gonna tinker with it just a little bit and see what I see. And I'm waiting on my buddy Paul to get over here. I don't know if that's gonna be today or tomorrow or what, but uh, hopefully I can get him over here and give it a once over with me. And uh, hopefully we can go through there together and kind of find the culprit. Uh, he's he's much more up on the complete hydraulic systems than I am. I'm more of a build the components type of guy. But I'm learning. So there is you a good shot of the inside of a Kearney, Kearney and Trekker 307 S12 milling machine. Alright. And of course I'll bring you back and show you some more goodies once I find it. I'm just taking a look there and I was I was wondering if the uh, the spring was broken up inside here this this is where that spring goes so I went ahead and I, I removed the plug okay 
and looked inside and I could see the end of the spring so I pulled it out not really sure yet what else to uh, what else to look for in there I don't know yet I'm just I'm just looking uh, so we need to check this side I'm coming around here and I'm looking right here okay get this light and so far what I see is there's a hole right here there's a tapped hole there's threads right there there's no cap there's no plug or anything right there and I can see inside of there that looks like a ball bearing right there let's see I can move it I'm wondering if the oil is not coming out of this hole right here hmm I don't know let's keep we'll keep working at it see what uh, see what we can figure out guys all right dive it in a little bit further thought I'd show you where I'm at I'm still just checking out a couple things so I'm gonna give you a quick little update right here and then we're gonna go over to the mill and I'm gonna show you something over there too so again this is where you uh, adjust your pressure this side is supposed to be for constant pressure this side here and this side is to adjust your knee lube pressure for the oil pump that's mounted on the side okay again I found that this hole right here had nothing there was nothing in this hole there's threads in here I could see the the check ball which I have taken out you can see right here this is what was inside okay just like that you have your plunger a spring there's a little backup here and then there was the ball and so with the first inspection without removing any of this I could see the ball and the little backup plunger there just like so so uh, right now I'm not sure if that's what the culprit is is this guy right here this open hole I don't know if both of these chambers in here are connected and this is allowing all the oil to blow out I'm not really sure yet I noticed right here okay over on the side you got you got these two guys which are flow controls all right I'm not really sure if this has anything to do with the problem yet or not uh, but again that's something that we'll investigate too is these these two guys right here all right so that's where I'm at here before I go any further and uh, we're gonna go over the knee and uh, I'm gonna show you something over there all right so I got you looking down the inside the belly of the beast here inside the knee this is where the distribution box sits right here uh, you guys probably have never seen inside one of these before and there's no telling who else is going to show give you a shot of <laughs> of the inside of the knee like this it's pretty neat but anyway what i wanted to do was come over here and inspect you can see there's still oil in the bottom here you know i drained it your oil level comes all the way up to here but i drained it out what i wanted to do was feel around and see if I could feel anything in the oil all right I found a couple things but all it does is lead to more questions all right first thing I found was this little ring right here and it was actually sitting right about there and I didn't even, I couldn't even see it it actually had been sitting there for so long that there was a lot of like residue built up around the edges there it was kind of uh, blended in but I felt that and plucked it pulled it out it looks like maybe some kind of little spacer okay all right so I'm feeling around I'm looking for maybe some kind of like pipe plug or something like that you know a little threaded piece I don't find anything like that okay but I did find this a snap ring <laughs> so we got 
those look like they're pretty close matches to to whatever shaft you got a little spacer and a snap ring here okay don't know what they're for but we'll keep that in mind uh, I didn't find anything else except for a little piece of gasket here. I believe somebody has already been in this machine once before. We've got little um, blue gasket, uh, gasket sealant there all the way around it. So apparently somebody's been into this. I don't think K&T would put this stuff on there. All right, and other than that, we just kind of have a dirty sump. So this is a very good time that I can get in here and clean this thing out. I did find a couple little metal chips in here. I can tell that this is an actual, you know, a chip from cutting something, machining something. So, but there's a lot of residue. So I got my pig mats I'm going to lay in there and soak all that oil up. And now I'm going to give it a good wash down, you know, wipe everything out real good. So... The, uh, the inspection continues, and I hope to uh, find something. I even checked the plug. This is your drain plug that goes to that hole there. It does have a magnet on it, but there was nothing there. Now, I don't know if it's possible that it could have got washed. Something could have got washed down in the drain oil, so I'm going to check all of my uh, oil that I dumped out also and see if I didn't catch something in that. All right, I just haven't done that yet. I got to get some gloves on for that. So, again, there's your look on the inside of the K and T. And see, here's here's more of your. Um, hydraulic system right here they've actually got some of these ports built into the, the casting itself there's a block that bolts on right here and you can see all these little holes that is the um, tr uh, rapid traverse lever right there so it's a little valve body that just bolts on right there okay right there right here you can see we got three more holes and that's the actual o-ring still stuck there and those transfer on to the case that bolts here and comes over to the test points on the side that you know i had that gauge sitting here that was for this hole right here it just does a 90 and comes out so that's that's interesting there too <laughs> 